Hello and welcome to the Weekend Investing Daily Bites. This is Alok Jain. Uh, the, ma the major news for the day is that oil may still become a major issue going forward. Oil is on the boil. Oil is up 5 to 7% from last night's announcements where OPEC plus countries, Saudi Arabia, Russia, they've all come together and decided that they want to, uh, you know, cut the uh, output by almost a million barrels. And once they do that, uh, essentially what will happen is that uh, the price of oil will tend to go up. And there are, uh, you know, there are experts of that oil industry who are now saying that it's quite possible that oil may become, uh, you know, a hundred dollars and above in the coming months. So that actually has put a spanner in the, uh, uh, I would say, uh, in the works to the extent that everything was looking like going as per the, you know, lowering of inflation plan. But now with the crude oil being a major component uh, which can really propel inflation uh, for its uh, you know down the stream impacts on 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 day to day prices now if oil is going to remain at a heightened state uh, and is likely to go towards the three digit mark that i think put that case that enable So if the inflation uh, equation is, you know, not not conducive for for the coming months and quarters, then I don't foresee how uh, you know the Fed rate cuts could come. Uh, we've reached a certain level of rate hikes, and there was hope that you know those hikes will stop. Maybe they will stop, but at least uh, easing or cutting of rates will not be possible if if inflation remains robust in the coming uh, quarters so this is something of a new development you can say uh, where uh, you know oil has jumped up and oil is still you know trading in this larger uh, downward channel and if it starts to go above 88 89 i think that will become a, a serious point of concern if and when that happen and let me also show you what is happening with the SPR. This is good oil. And you can see that since that reserve has been going down and post COVID, it dramatically has dropped. Uh, so what is happening is that they have sacrificed almost half their reserves from 700 million barrels down to nearly 371. The hope that they will be able to buy it lower at $70 or lower. And they sold it at about 90, 85, 90. Now, these two larger groups of the world, USA versus you know China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, there is a huge war that is going on. And now this other camp, the OPEC plus camp, has sprung a surprise on the on the world by saying that you know we are cutting production, and by cutting production prices will go up. And now the U.S. is a bit stuck in the sense that they wanted to fill up their uh, inventory before prices went up, but now the prices are likely to go up even before they start to do that. And if they start to replenish their inventory, prices may even skyrocket even more. So this is a very uh, crazy kind of a catch-22 situation that has come around. And this is not good for India, actually, because our main uh, Achilles heel is, is crude oil and import of crude oil. And if crude oil is going to remain pricey, uh, that is going to trouble uh, the Indian uh, uh, you know, uh, conditions to some extent, at least. And, and inflation that was likely or is or was looking like coming down 
uh, that will be a sticky uh, inflation to go forward. So this is the current uh, messy situation that we've got ourselves in. So from that perspective, it does seem like, uh, you know, maybe a rough road, at least for some foreseeable future. But uh, as optimists as we always are, uh, we'll hope that, you know, some uh, magic will happen in the markets and we'll be able to, you know, carry on as we were um, before October 2021 happened. So the consolidation is on. We are hoping that results in April will be robust and that result season may be able to overshadow uh, all these uh, geopolitical uh, news. So Nifty chart, you can see it is trying to claw back up uh, after this congestion here, uh, two days of uh, upswing, but it is not out of the woods yet. I, I, I would think that, you know, crossing 17,600, 17,700 will remain a task, but nevertheless, a good, uh, I would think a good move in three days, it has gone from about 16,900 to about 17,400. It may rest around and go and tag this uh, as well. Heat map on the day, India, ONGC, Maruti, uh, Bajaj Auto, Bharti Airtel, Bajaj Finance, these were the ones uh, running. Uh, there was some softness in FMCG stocks, Hindustan Levers, ITC, uh, IT stocks, Infosys was falling, TCS a bit, uh, JSW Steel, Hindalco, Adani Enterprise, these were some of the uh, stocks that were falling. But largely, I would say it was a mixed bag. And reasonably fairly uh, distributed with gains and losses here. Sectoral overview, autos was leading the pack with good numbers from Marthi and uh, Mahindra, 1.5% uh, up. PSU banks uh, running up again at 1.1%. Uh, the real estate stocks also going up 0.9%. Consumption stocks were up. What was losing was FMCG, metal and IT stocks. So some softness and energy and some softness there, but largely the momentum that was built yesterday has continued. And for the last one week, the market looks extremely robust from, from the perspective of uh, short term momentum. Mid caps also coming back, uh, you know, above the uh, death line that we had here on the, on the support line. So that is all good. And small caps also have recovered very smartly three sharp days of down days and now we have three sharp up days. So most of the damage that was happened in the last three days has been recovered in the previous three. So this is all good. But again, as I said, in a, in a medium to longer term basis, the, the pattern is still not bullish, uh, but we, uh, you know, cannot, uh, you know, uh, undermine this move. You, who knows that, you know, it may go and, and create some pattern here and then break out maybe in a month or two. But uh, as of now, it is just a pullback. Let's not read too much into that. Nifty Bank is very near the pullback range here. It is also has a gap here. So I'm expecting to cover, you know, this three, 400 points very quickly. And then, of course, it is also going to face the challenge of trying to break this trend line. Uh, large and mid-cap stocks, you can see, were marginally up. Uh, uh, Nifty, CNX uh, 200, Nifty Next 50, and some of our strategies were also in line here. Mid and small caps actually did well. MI20 and MI50 up 1.1% each. Uh, pure small cap strategies up almost nearly 1% today. And all cap strategies were a bit subdued. Uh, MI30 and MI all cap at slight gains. And ATH and ATH2 both hit by KPIT tech, I think. Uh, which has uh, which is there in both these stocks. So KPIT Tech is one stock that has been running very very hard. Uh, today JP Morgan has come out with some report of to which uh, the market has reacted. But tomorrow is another day and we'll see how that plays along. Stock of the day is Laura Slabs after a huge uh, amount of uh, you know slipping right from 700 levels and then you know, sort of plateauing near 380 400 and then. This is starting to look a slightly, uh, uh, you know, bottomish share at least for the intermediate term. So this is uh, something that you can, you know, put on your uh, watch list and see if you get a, a trading setup based on this. So that will be something that you could look for. So this is all I had for today's uh, market session. Let